own. So tech in 2021 is pretty much impossible to get your hands on. And that goes for, you know, CPUs, GPUs, streaming techs, microphones, monitors, but nobody's asking the question, what tech from 2020 is making a lasting impression and here to stay? So over the last year or so, I've reviewed plenty of products and I have 84 videos or so on the channel. One of those reviews, if any, were worthy of me actually hanging on to and putting to use. Here's the full list of what I kept from 2020. So I wanna start with my first most popular video that I made and that's the HP 25X. Have I kept it? And the answer is yes, I've actually kept that monitor and used it as my secondary display to this day. It's been phenomenal. The only thing I will say are the viewing angles are a bit off, but it's well worth checking out that full video I did. It's unboxing. I talk a little bit about the display. It's on the channel. Go check it out. The next piece of 2020 tech is the LG GN850. It's a phenomenal piece of technology and I still use it to this day. The HDR is halfway decent, although I don't use it often, but the 1440p and the larger display size at 27 inches has allowed it to be extremely productive for me in something that I, I actually couldn't get away from. I couldn't go backwards on monitors. This has been probably my most used piece of tech for creating videos for this channel. So I do have a sad moment when it comes to monitors and I did a phenomenal video on the CRG5. We actually compared it to another monitor and it was a little bit of a longer video, but I learned a lot about the monitor in the process and how to dial it in. And I'll be honest, it was my favorite gaming monitor. Yes, it was only 1080 and it wasn't HDR, but the 240 Hertz FreeSync panel was probably the smoothest that I've ever played on. Uh, and I just, I was upset that I, that I ended up selling it, but I sold it to a friend who actually makes videos uh, on Facebook. He's a streamer and I thought it would be extremely useful for him, more so for me because I don't play games as much. His name's Drew Blades, go check him out. Best mustache in gaming. I'll put a link below and shout him out on the video. That way you guys can check it out. But that CRG5 was probably my favorite gaming monitor of 2020. And I'll definitely recommend checking that out for your gaming monitor if you're looking for something similar. Now, another piece of technology that I did keep was the Nanoleaf Canvas. I think anything to do with lighting is a must have. Like if you don't have enough lighting in your space or cool ambient lighting in your space, you need to go check out something like the Nanoleaf Canvas or other brands out there, Hue, LifeX, any brand that does cool lighting like that, you have to get. It sets the mood. It also allows me to get good camera shots, camera angles, uh, and it's fun to play with. You know, all of these things are smart. They link to my phone, super easy to do. So the Nanoleaf Canvas is a phenomenal product that I actually ended up keeping. And I got these little corner pieces so I can actually put it in a corner. Uh, so it looks kind of cool behind my desk. A product that I kept from 2020 that I'm not super impressed by or even happy that I have kept it. I just have continued to use it because it works okay for the most part. And that's my Corsair Void Pro wireless headset. Uh, I will say that I had many connection issues with the little wireless adapter they gave me and I had to rearrange it on my actual computer to get it to a spot where it doesn't want to disconnect and I actually think it was the Corsair IQ system and not that actual dongle uh, because I've had no other issues with any other products out there even if I've tested them uh, like the Arctis One wireless that I did worked flawlessly. I never had any issues whatsoever. So I think it's just that headset uh, and it it's kind of an annoying headset because it doesn't really, it's not that comfortable. Uh, but nonetheless, I've kept it and it's been solid. It works just fine besides that connection issue. So, you know, if you need something that's inexpensive, I guess check it out. But I would maybe recommend the Arctis One Wireless over that. Over the last couple of months, we haven't been doing tons of reviews on new PC components. And one of the biggest reasons is lack of inventory anywhere. We really can't get our hands on anything. We're not a big channel, so it's hard for us to 
to be able to reach out and find that inventory somewhere. So something that I've kept from 2020 and heck, probably even 2019 is every single PC component that I've ever reviewed or bought. Uh, and the reason why, at least from the last you know year, and the reason why is you literally can't find good components anywhere. I can't find CPUs, I can't find GPUs, and I'm not about to sell mine, even though I can make a little money, probably based on fair market value. I don't mean scalp, I mean make a little money based on what it would normally cost in this day and age. I, I'm not gonna do that because there's no way I'm gonna find another GPU if I sell my 5700 XT. Believe me, I'm trying. So if you can find tech from 2020, like the Ryzen 3700X or the 5700 XT, grab it up. Uh, they're great products. They work great for me at 1440p and tons of other use cases. Uh, and they're probably not gonna be near as expensive or scalped as products today launching right now. Well, I have to admit that shortly after I made probably the most popular video in the first 30 days about the Xbox Series X and using it with 1440p at 120 Hz, I'm a little hesitant to say this, but I did actually give that Series X up. Yeah, I was a bit unfortunate, but I ended up giving it to my brother because he does not have a current gen console. He has the first generation of the Xbox One. And I just couldn't stand playing uh, Call of Duty with him using that system because I'll be honest, he was pretty terrible, but it's because he had an old system. Ever since he's got that Series X, he's actually much better. I won't go into it, but the reality is that I was pretty sad that I had to let it go because it was a monster of a console. I wanted to bring it up even though it's technically a newer piece of tech that you can't get your hands on, but I wanted to bring it up because with my gaming PC, I didn't find it useful enough in many different ways for me to actually hang on to it. And if there was somebody that could use it more than me, or if I didn't really need to spend the money, then it was well worth selling it to somebody else and using it for maybe saving it towards a graphics card when they come out or a 2.1 monitor when it comes out. Um, so, you know, a bit sad that I had to get rid of it, but I think if you're a PC gamer, this is a product that you probably don't have to have if you don't need it, and that's the way I felt. So I know it's fairly hit or miss, but I did do a video on Gadget Discovery Club because I wanted to see what they gave me. And to be honest, they gave me a ton of products from Rise. They gave me this little mini Bluetooth speaker, which was okay, uh, and then they gave me a money clip. Um, I actually ended up keeping the money clip, which was cool, uh, but I gave that speaker away on a giveaway I did on the channel. So make sure you hit the notification bell and subscribe because we're gonna do more giveaways later in the future. And we do have live videos every Thursday. So definitely subscribe and like the video. So a lot happened in the wireless earbud world in 2020. I reviewed probably five or six different wireless earbuds in 2020 and I kept every single one of them or at least gave to somebody close to me to use because I'm obviously not going to be using five or six different pairs of headphones at the same time. The one I did return however was the Raycon E55s. Uh, pretty big fail in my opinion. I did review their new E25 Pros but they haven't launched them yet so Anyone hardly knows about them. That being said, they weren't night and day better, but they were good enough for me to keep. Included with those earbuds were all the Galaxy earbuds. I did keep those uh, because they've been very good quality and I do have a backup pair that I don't use all the time. I typically stick with the Galaxy Buds Live uh, because there's, the sound is just that much better than pretty much everything else that I've tried. These are something you can buy right now. Uh, and, and be very happy with and will continue to be good for you through 2021. So you don't need to wait for new launches. Go buy a pair of the Galaxy Buds Live. That's definitely a well worth product to hang on to or buy today, you know? So going back to computer components, I did a lot of all-in-one reviews and install guides. And I'll be honest, I haven't kept every single one because I've wanted to get new ones and I don't have 20 different PCs. I have about three. So um, so the Deep Cool Castle 240EX was probably one of the better all-in-one coolers that I ended up selling. 
And it actually went to the same person, Drew Blades, best mustache in gaming. Uh, it went to him along with the monitor that I sold him because it was actually very new at the time and I wanted to check out the Kraken X53, which I did keep that Kraken X53. It's been a phenomenal 240 millimeter, uh, but I may swap it out with some newer stuff that came out more recently. Uh, new videos on the channel if you wanna check that out. Um, but I was a little sad to let it go because yeah, for the price, it was a good all-in-one cooler. Um, I did get rid of it though. Uh, but if you need an all-in-one cooler and you just can't find stock anywhere, check out the Deep Cool 240EX or the Kraken X53. Both great all-in-one coolers. X53 kind of taking the cake there. I did a comparison video if you want to check it out. So getting into some accessories and home theater, I did a video on the Sonos Beam and it wasn't that popular of a video, but um, I like the product. The product's been phenomenal. Um, it's the only soundbar that I currently use, although I will be doing somewhat of a home theater slash stereo setup for you guys to check out later in the future. Uh, the Sonos Beam has been phenomenal for me in a small form factor. It's a product you can get unlike the Sonos Arc. The Sonos Arc is sold out pretty much everywhere. Uh, so if you need a decent sound bar, uh, especially in the Sonos variety, the Sonos Beam is well worth it and something that I hung on to and I'm going to continue to hang on to because it's been so good. Now something that I can't report as being the best product that I hung on to was the Elite Series 2 controller. Honestly, it was great for the first six months. It worked perfectly in every regard. Uh, and you know, the only thing that hung me up about it initially was the fact that mobile gaming was a little low on the compatibility list. Uh, but for what I used it for, which was with my Xbox and of course my PC on specific games, not every game for all you PC master race, keyboard and mouse people, but I do use it on Call of Duty quite often because that's how I learned to play them. I've had plenty of issues with this controller over the last month. It's been a challenge. The joystick on the left hand side is stuck, stuck forward. So I probably wouldn't recommend you go buy that. Uh, but I am looking at new controllers to check out for PC and next gen consoles. So definitely hit that notification bell so you see when I put that video up uh, because I think it's gonna be pretty important moving into the future with the new consoles that we have. So fairly early on on the channel, I reviewed some of the Alexa products. They were probably one of the best buys that I've made personally. I've upgraded tons of smart lighting and some other features in my home that I use these for on a daily basis. In fact, uh, my girlfriend who is not even that techie uses these uh, to show eight to kind of check in on the devices that we have and also control the lights that we have or had uh, previously in our other place. I'm still setting it up here in the new spot, but she used it every day to turn on and off the lights and do other things, look, check the news, check the weather, check the traffic. And they've been a phenomenal buy. And honestly, I haven't seen Amazon come out with a better product than the Echo Show 8. It's just, it's been my best, most used smart device in my home. So definitely recommend grabbing one of those guys because you're not gonna find anything better in 2021 to be honest, in that same category. So I'm jumping all over the place, but I kind of wrote this list down as I was jumping between videos. Uh, but going back to all-in-one coolers, one of the first, actually the first most popular video for all-in-one coolers that I did was the Kraken M22. It's a uh, 120 millimeter all-in-one cooler, um, super easy to install, great product for what it was, $79.99. Phenomenal product. And if you're looking for an all-in-one cooler that's a small form factor, I promise you that's gonna deliver everything you need. But I did sell that product. I didn't hang on to it, mainly because I needed better cooling for my overclocking. Uh, so that's why I moved to like the 240EX from Deep Cool and then the Kraken X53. And then I just got hooked. So I ended up buying a bunch of other all-in-one coolers and reviewed them. and all that fun stuff. So other honorable mentions that I hung on to was actually, um, I bought a lavalier mic uh, called like the Foo Lame something from Amazon. It was like 130 bucks. I did a review very early on. Uh, and that's a product that maybe you want, maybe you don't, um, but it was pretty cool. It's, it's held up. It literally works the same that it did the day I got it and the same today. So it's a great product. I hung on to it. 
it's a piece of tech that I think is worth keeping. Another honorable mention would be the Wave 3 microphones. I will say there's been a challenge getting inventory on some of the extra accessories that we need for the Wave 3 microphones, uh, but they've been great microphones. Honestly, I'm recording this whole thing using the Wave 3, and it, this, the quality of sound is much better than the Blue Yeti, and it's much easier to dial in than the Blue Yeti. I struggle with that Blue Yeti. I use it in our live streams on Thursdays, but um, the Wave 3 actually has better audio capability, in my opinion. So that's really it. I mean, I could spend all day talking about the tech that I reviewed in 2020, but those are the particular products that I kept and some that I didn't and I wasn't so happy about. Maybe we can have a list from 2020 tech or things that are maybe a little bit older that people can go buy and know is reliable when they purchase it. And that's what this video is intended for, is to give you a list of products that are generally gonna be available for inventory because we know 2021 is not gonna get better for inventory. We're probably gonna be waiting until summer until we see GP CPUs and CPUs, specifically even consoles, come into stock. So why wait? Grab something that you know is tried and true. Maybe this list helps, maybe it doesn't. But if you have any ideas, put it in the comments below. I'd love to start that discussion and create a reliable old tech list that we can use on this channel for other people to gain access to and benefit from. So that's it for me, you guys. Thanks for watching the video. Definitely hit the like, subscribe to the channel so you see when we go live, hit the notification bell. And without further ado, I'll catch you in the next video. Blah. Hi, y'all.